Hello everyone, welcome to part 4 of my remastered tutorial of creating a digital audio synthesizer. In this part, we'll be implementing wavetables as our method of generating sound, which will replace the old mathematical equations, which are very performance inefficient and won't allow us to edit the frequency that the sound has been generated at in real time. But before we get into implementing the wavetables, I want to start off this one issue I realised was occurring once I uploaded the previous episode, which is if we press any key on the keyboard, that we haven't mapped in this static block here, so anyone other than these characters here, we will throw a null pointer exception once we call this get method from the key frequencies map. This is because if we pass a key that hasn't been put into the map, the key frequencies.get method returns null. So because the key isn't registered in the map, it's throwing a null pointer exception. For example, if we press 1, which isn't in this string here, it will throw the null pointer exception. All we have to do to fix this, very simple fix, we put an if statement here. If the key frequencies map contains the key char, or if it doesn't contain the key char, then we'll simply return out of the method. So this will be fixed now if we press 1 again. No more exception. But if we press any of the other keys in the map, still plays just fine. So first things first, what is a waveform? In this case, a waveform is a data structure that contains audio data regarding a complete cycle of a waveform algorithm. The benefits of this is it will allow us to change the frequency of the waveform in real time without causing the annoying audio crackling way of the previous part, and indexing a wavetable is much more performance efficient than calculating all these mathematical algorithms up here, so it's much more performance friendly. Next, we're going to want to clean up the oscillator class a little bit by removing some of the mathematical equation specific code such as the wave position field, the frequency field, the waveform field and the random field and also we can remove the get key frequency method since we never really used it and the frequency setter here. Next we can remove the waveform enum and create another one called wavetable. We can set its access specifier to internal and create the wavetables names that we had previously. So sine, square, saw and triangle. We'll not be using noise for this because we can't really install a wavetable of that since it's random every time. But we can implement our own noise generator in the future as a separate oscillator. We're also going to want to define a constant here which will be the size of the wavetable. We'll set that to 8192. So we stick with the 2 to the power of the numbering convections, just for mathematical reasons. And we'll have a private final float array, which will be the wavetable, the samples of the wavetable. Uh, these will be floats instead of doubles, just because we'll be storing quite a few values, so it's more memory efficient to have them as floats. We'll have the size as the size we've declared. Also, this needs to be a new float array. And then we'll have a static block where we'll initialize these samples and also a get method for get samples. Next we'll want to fill the samples array of each of these enum values and to do this we'll first declare a double, a final double, which will be called fundamental frequency. Basically the fundamental frequency uses a specific equation based on the size of the wavetable and this will be the frequency that each wave oscillates at to produce a complete wave of the desired size. And this equation is 1 divided by the size of the wavetable divided by the sample rate. So in this case we'll need to cast to a double because size divided by a sample rate will be integer division and we want floating point division. So synthesizer remastered the audio info dot sample rate. Next we'll create the loop for each value in size. So i is smaller than size. We'll increment i. And now we we'll want to copy over all the waveform equations we've got in the oscillator class, which I'm going to do off camera since we've already written them down before. So here are all the equations I've copied over from the oscillator class using the fundamental frequency here. I'd print each value of each waveform out to show you that the fundamental frequency equation does work, but we have errors to fix in the oscillator class first. So let's get fixing these so we can start the program up again. 
We'll replace the waveform type with wave table. And to stop having to copy all the, creating a new array with all the enum values in, I realized that we can just call the values method, which will create an array for us. And we'll create the, or set the uh, default selected item to sign, which is what we'd like it to be. Uh, next, we can change the cast to wavetable here and create a wavetable field. Private wavetable, wavetable equals, uh, we'll set it to sign by default. And then we can change all the fields to wavetable here. Uh, we can also remove all of these waveform equations. Now we can implement the get next sample property. But first we need to declare two new fields up here. The first one being, or both of them being integers, but the first one being the wavetable step size. And the second one being the wavetable index. Back down to the get next sample property, we can create a new uh, double here called sample, which will be the wavetable field, the get samples method of the current wavetable index we've created. Next, we can set the wavetable index to be the wavetable index plus the wavetable step size modulo the wavetable dot size. If you remember the modulo being used to the audio thread in here, it basically uh, keeps the buffer index in the range of the buffer count. So for example, if wavetable step index, if this returns 8192, which will be index out of bounds exception, because that's equal to the size, then it'll be set to zero instead. So the first index of the wavetable. And then after we do that, we can simply return the sample. Now we've never actually changed the wavetable step size anywhere in the program. And that is done in the apply tone offset method. So wavetable step size equals cast to an integer, the wavetable.size multiplied by the key frequency times by math.pow2 to the power of get tone offset and then we'll divide that by the sample rate and this is the equation that determines the wavetable step size based on the wavetable's actual size and the frequency that the oscillator is currently oscillating at. So now that I've fixed all the code errors, we can start the program and I can show you that the fundamental frequency equation works. So we'll just create a print statement and we'll print sign samples, uh, sign dot samples of the I po each position. And you'll see here that once we look at the samples, they start at all the way up here. It starts at zero goes up in its uh, sign fashion to 1, goes all the way back down to 0, hits its bottom point, its lowest value, minus 1, and then goes all the way back up to 0. So that's one full sine wave based on the fundamental frequency. Next we can try printing the square wave. So all we do is start the program again, and we'll see that the all the starting values are positive 1, starting at zero then goes to positive one and then all the way to minus one so, uh, halfway through so that's perfect square wave uh, we can look at saw this should print all the values up to one and then drop right back down so go up to one and then it goes right back down to minus one and builds back up to zero that's fine and finally we can have a look at the triangle samples which should peak at 1 and then go back down to 0 or oh, start at minus 1 sorry then peak up to 1 and then go right back down to minus 1 so it peaks at 1 up here there and then go all the way back down to 0 so why don't we try hearing these uh, new wavetable algorithms and try changing the frequency in real time and see if it causes the annoying crackling sound we had before so let's start the synthesizer and just try increasing the frequency of one sine wave while the others are playing.
you can hear, there's definitely no crackling there. And we can finally have a play around with all the combination of waveforms without the annoying audio crackling. Which is a great improvement. And also the great performance improvement of not having to calculate all these equations every single time we want to generate one sample. This has been part 4 by Remastered Stroth, creating a digital audio synthesizer. I know this one's been short, but we have greatly improved the quality of the sound we can generate from the synthesizer. In the next part, we'll be looking at adding a volume parameter to each oscillator, which will give us even more choice to manipulate the type of sounds the synthesizer is making. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in part 5.